Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at how to get complex numbers into polar form. So if you see here, rectangular form or Cartesian form is the normal way we uh, deal with our complex numbers where you have a real and an imaginary part. But what we want to do in this video is be able to convert that into polar form. And polar form is of the form or bracket cos theta plus i sine theta. And I'm going to explain exactly how to do that uh, now. The reason that we want to be able to get a complex number in polar form is because the only way that we can apply de Moivre's theorem is if we have our complex number in polar form. The reason we want to be able to apply de Moivre's theorem is because it allows us to get high powers of complex numbers without having to multiply it out in a long-winded algebraic way. When we can write it in polar form, we can apply a power really, really easily using de Moivre. So the first stage before we can even use de Moivre is to be able to convert a complex number written in real and imaginary form into polar form. Okay, so with polar form, the two key elements are, we need to calculate this OR, and this OR is the modulus, and we need to calculate this angle here, which is what's called the argument. Let's jump straight into an example, and this will make more sense. So we are going to uh, convert the complex number 1 plus i, and we're going to put it into polar form. So the first thing we're going to do is find the modulus. The modulus, if we look at this graphically, is the distance between the origin and that complex number when it's drawn on the argon diagram. So one is along on the real axis and uh, obviously up i or one i on the imaginary axis. So there is where one plus i is plotted on the argon diagram. So the modulus is the length of this line. So the way we calculate it comes from Pythagoras. And so if you take the modulus of a complex number a plus b i, we are going to get it by getting the square root of the value a squared plus the value b squared. Okay, so in this case then or is going to be the square root of our value a is 1 and our value b is 1. It's just 1, it's 1 along and 1 up. So you're not putting an i in there, you're putting the coefficient of i or the, the number that it goes up. So square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 2. So now that's our or value, now we need to find theta, our angle here, which is called the argument. Now the argument is always taking the angle between the positive sense of the x-axis, so this side of the x-axis, your real axis, it's always the angle between that line and your modulus. Okay, so that line joining the origin to your complex number, wherever your complex number is. It is always going from the positive sense of the x-axis to that line, and in this case, there is our argument. That is the angle we are looking for. So to recap, the argument is the angle between the positive side of the x-axis and the line from the origin to the complex number. So you'll always do that little sketch. So now the way to calculate this angle is, well, if we make a right angle triangle here with the x-axis, you'll always make your right angle triangle with the x-axis. What you have here is that's 1 and it's 1 up. So the length of both of those sides of the right angle is 1 and 1. And since we want this angle here, from my trig ratios, if I have the opposite side and the adjacent side, I can apply my tan ratio, which is opposite over adjacent, which is in this case 1 over 1. And from that, I'll be able to do tan inverse 1, and this will give me my angle. And so the answer is 45 degrees. And so now, putting those elements back into our polar form, we get that 1 plus i in Cartesian form is equal to, or is the square root of 2, times cos, theta is 45 degrees, plus i sine 45 degrees. 
So personally, I would work all the time in degrees, but if they're looking for radians, I would just do the conversion to radians at the end. And if you're unsure of whether the question is asking for it in uh, degrees or radians, give both answers. So in this case, to do the conversion, since we know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, therefore one degree is equal to pi divided by 180, in order to then convert any degrees, we're just gonna multiply by pi over 180. So in that case then, when we multiply 45 degrees by pi over 180, I get square root of two cos pi over four plus i sine pi over four. Okay, so there's your two answers, this in degrees and this in polar form in radians. Okay, so let's try one. Um, root three plus i. And remember your polar form is r cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, pause the video and have a go at this and press play then when you feel you need a little bit of help or to see if you got it right at the end. So first thing I'm gonna do is my modulus, and that is gonna be the square root of root three squared plus one squared, which is the square root of uh, three plus one, which is the square root of four, which is two. So R is equal to two. So then I'm going to do a little sketch, and root three plus I is going to be roughly here, along root three and up i. And again, you're gonna make your right angle triangle with the x axis. So what we have here is that's root three along, up one i, they're the lengths of that right angle triangle. And the argument is always going from the positive sense of the x axis to that line. So there's my argument. That's the angle, therefore, I am looking for. So what I'm going to do here is, again, opposite over adjacent. Tan of that angle is equal to 1 over root 3. So the angle is tan inverse 1 over root 3. So that angle works out to be 30 degrees. And so polar form is... 2 times cos 30 degrees plus i sine 30 degrees. And just to put it into radians as well, that will be 2 cos and multiply this by pi over 180. And I get pi over 6. And that's my answer. Let's try another example. So now let's put this complex number into polar form so go ahead and pause the video and see how far you can get with that one and so i'm going to get the modulus first i end up with four plus two which is square root of six okay and then you're going to draw your sketch now this time it's minus two plus root two i so it's up root two and back minus two, so two back and two up. So there is your line. Now the argument is always going from the positive sense of the x-axis to that line. So that's the angle I need. So how am I gonna get that angle? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the right angle triangle that's made with the x-axis and I will use my trig races to find this angle. I'm just gonna call it A in here. I'll find this angle using trig, and then I'll be able to take it away from the straight line 180, and that will give me this angle here. It's this angle here that's the argument. That's the one we need, the one going from the positive sense of the right, the x-axis to that line. That's what we need. But in order to calculate that one, I can work at this one first and then subtract it from 180 in this context. So the right angle triangle is length two here 
and root 2 up and I'm going to find this angle first opposite over adjacent again so it's going to be tan a is equal to root 2 over 2 so this angle here is tan inverse root 2 over 2 so we're getting 35.26 degrees so we'll round that to the nearest whole number 35 degrees okay so in order now to calculate what the theta is theta is going to be 180 minus the 35 degrees which is 145 degrees that is what my theta is my argument so my complex number is root 6 cos 145 degrees plus i sine 105 degrees and in radians that is cos 29 pi over 36 plus i sine 29 pi over 36 multiplying each of the angles by pi over 180. Let's try another one. Okay, so again, pause the video, see how far you can get with this one, and replay when you need a little bit of help or to check to see if you're right at the end. So, I'm going to get my modulus first, square root of minus 1 squared plus minus 2 squared, and that is square root of 1 plus 4, so the modulus or or is root 5. Okay. So now we are going to sketch this. And minus one, minus two i is back at minus one, down at minus two i. There's your line. And so the argument always goes from the positive side of the x-axis all the way to that line. So that's the angle I'm looking for. So how am I gonna calculate that angle? Well, again, I'm going to look at this right angle triangle here. And if I get this angle here, if I just add that on to 180, the straight angle here, I get that full angle that I need for the argument. So looking at that, I'll call this A. That's the angle I want. This length is back one, so it's a length of one, and it's down two, so that's a length of two. There's my right angle triangle, which you always make with the x-axis. And again, I'm going to use tan. So it is going to be opposite over adjacent. And so tan of that angle A is opposite, which is two, over adjacent, which is one. So A is equal to tan inverse of 2 and that we are getting 63.43 we'll take that to the nearest whole number 63 degrees okay so now what do I need to do I need to find the argument so that full angle here so I'm going to add on 180 to the 63 and that will give me the full angle all the way around so theta therefore is 180 plus the 63 degrees in this case. So what I'm getting then is 243 to the nearest angle. So in polar form then I'm getting root 5 times cos 243 degrees plus I sine 243 degrees. And in radians that would be root 5 cos multiplying this angle by pi over 180 will give me 27 pi over 20, which is that angle in radians. Might be worth getting in the habit of writing down the two, the two answers, just in case it's so easy to miss the exam paper question uh, and, and not realize that maybe you did need it in radians or you did need it in, in degrees. If you put both down, then you're sure you've got yourself covered. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so have another go at this. Pause the video and see how far you get. I'm giving you examples of one in each quadrant just so you get a feel for exactly how to calculate that argument. So try this one and see how far you can get. So 
for the modulus, it's going to be the square root of a half squared plus minus root 3 over 2 squared. So that works out to be square root of 1 quarter plus 3 over 4, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. Okay, so now our sketch. So it's a half along and down minus 3, root 3 over 2. So that's your complex number there. So again, the argument is always going from the positive side of the x-axis all the way along to that line. So that's the angle I'm looking for. So how will I calculate that angle? Well, easiest thing to do here, again, is to make your right angle triangle with the x-axis. Let's calculate this angle here. And then to get the red angle, all we need to do is subtract that angle from 360 degrees. So, the triangle I'm looking at here, that length is a half, and the length down is root 3 over 2. And this is the angle I'm looking for. I'm just going to call it A. So again, that's opposite over adjacent. So we have tan of the angle is equal to root 3 over 2 divide by a half. The opposite divided by the adjacent. And so we get 60 degrees. So our theta then is 360 degrees, your full circle, take away this angle. So we're getting 300 degrees. So our polar form is 1 times cos 300 degrees plus I sine 300 degrees. Okay. And so in radian form, it's going to be cos, multiply this angle by pi over 180, and we get 5 pi over 3 plus I sine 5 pi over 3. And there's your answer. Okay, last example, uh, and that is we are going to change the complex number minus 3i and put that into polar form. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and see how far you can get and play if you need any little bit of help. So this complex number, the real part is obviously zero and the imaginary part is minus 3i. So the modulus is going to be the square root of zero squared plus minus three squared, which is the square root of nine, which is three. So three is your R. So now, sketching this, this one, minus 3i is down here on the y-axis. So how am I going to calculate the argument? Well, don't forget the argument is still the same. It is going to be the angle that goes from the positive side of the x-axis all the way around to that line that joins the origin to that complex number. So that is your angle. And straight away, we can see what that angle is. That angle is 270 degrees. So it's nice and clear from the diagram exactly what my argument is. So straight away, R is 3. And my angle is 270 degrees. 